Good afternoon and welcome to Super User TV. First of all, thank you to the two of you for taking the time out of your busy days to come and talk to us. Um, would you just take a minute and tell us who you are and what you do? So my name's Tim Bell. Um, I'm the Computer Infrastructure Manager at CERN, the home of the Large Hadron Collider. Okay, thank you. And I'm Dolph Matthews. I'm a Principal Engineer at Rackspace uh, and I've been working on OpenSock Identity uh, for close to five years now. All right, excellent, thank you. So today we're going to talk about uh, Federation, OpenStack Federation, specifically Identity Federation. Uh, so, uh, Dolph, why don't we start with you? What is Federation in general, and again, in particular, Identity Federation? Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of Federation. Um, resource Federation um, and Identity Federation, but it's generally some sort of sharing uh, of something across clouds in our context, uh, Identity. So, uh, for example, um, one cloud can serve as your identity provider cloud, and another cloud can consume the identities uh, from that cloud without actually having to uh, authenticate against, uh, having to actually share authentication information. Uh, you just actually federate identities across. Um, so you have a single source of truth, uh, management is centralized, um, and it kind of makes the whole world scale. Well, that's, that's a that's a great technical explanation, thank you. So Tim, from the user perspective, why is that important for you? So an organization like CERN is a worldwide collaboration. Uh, there are hundreds of labs and universities that use the facilities at CERN to understand the universe and how it works. So that means we've got about 11,000 users, uh, around 200 people leaving and arriving every month. And managing and tracking all of that at a central source is just not possible. We can't know when someone leaves a university or when they start. So we do not want them to be able to use resources outside of the period where their universities are collaborating. So something like Identity Federation, where CERN doesn't own that identity, but instead it is the institute with which the employment conditions are established, is a very powerful model for us. That's wonderful. So, uh, so now that Federation has been out there in the wild for some time, um, You've just talked about one use case. Uh, are there other particular use cases out there? So one example of a project that we're working on at the moment, uh, Indigo Data Cloud, um, is an EU-sponsored activity with 26 laboratories. And setting up access to CERN's facilities for testing was able to be done using the Identity Federation of the cloud. Had we had to do a special solution, then potentially we could lose valuable time as part of that collaboration rather than getting on solving the problems of the project. So we use the OpenStack Identity Federation in order to establish the network of trust. Excellent. So uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of challenges have you found when trying to federate across multiple OpenStack clouds? Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, maintenance challenges and operator challenges. Uh, it's, in my book, being a developer, uh, it's still early technology. Uh, we still have a lot to do uh, in terms of easing the operator experience. Um, and making the end user experience a lot smoother. Uh, so all the way through uh, the command line clients, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, Horizon, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we want to make it easier for uh, operators and actually end users to set up their own federations um, you know, in Horizon. Uh, so here's my certificates, trust my identity provider, and you know, I could have some public cloud trusting my private IDP. Uh, and. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> and from our side, what we find is that when we establish identity federation, it's actually only part of the problem. Mm -hmm. After that, you get into the questions of policy. Um, okay, you are authenticated, you are who you say you are, but maybe CERN does not want to trust the Google identity as highly as, for example, an authorized university. Should people have to sign computing rule policies? Are they allowed to own resources? This kind of policy question comes along, along with the technical implementations for a federation such as the CERN one. How did you wind up solving that? So a lot of it is a question of discussing establishing a workflow so that before people are added and given roles within the organization, then they go through an approval and a validation process, along with the process under which we can go back to their organization and say, excuse me, there's been a problem. Um, can we uh, work out how to resolve this? And I think that's the policy side that shouldn't be ignored along with the technical implementations. Gotcha. So uh, are there other particular lessons learned that other people should keep in mind when they're trying to set this up? Uh, are you <laughs> um, 
so I think the other aspect of it is a question of trying to make things so it's relatively user friendly. Mm -hmm. um, it can be quite daunting for an average user to understand what is federation. So therefore it's important that you give people things like sticky log on screens so they don't have to go back and search through 200 organizations each time you want to log in. Um, and finding a place so that the end user experience is one that can be done without documentation has certainly been an interesting part of the activity. Definitely. So, uh, so what else is OpenStack doing to make Cloud Federation easier? Uh, at this summit, we're actually working on uh, shadow users, kind of first and foremost. Uh, shadow users will uh, enable us to treat federated users as if they're local. Uh, and so we can manage authorization locally within the consuming cloud, uh, just as if you were a local user stored in SQL or perhaps LDAP or whatever. Um, and so it's actually going to unify our uh, authentication and authorization model across OpenStack and simplify a lot of code paths uh, that right now are very complicated. Um, so we're hoping to gain some stability out of that as well. Excellent. Is there anything else either of you want to add? So one of the aspects that we've really appreciated has been the OpenStack combined client, which has really helped us to provide a very consistent experience for the end user and also include support for Keystone V3, which needs to be done for Federation. So I think the work that's being done there on the upstream unification of those functions is really helpful because it also brings online Federation um, as part of that as an automatic plugin. Excellent. So upgrade to Keystone V3. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Well, thank you both very much, and uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you.